If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds with 3GameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Silverstone Strider Gold S Series ST75F GS power supply. It comes in a great looking box that has pictures of the product on it plus features and specifications about it. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. Included is a user's manual, a bag which has four cable ties, four velcro ties, as well as four regular screws and four thumb screws. And by the way, those screws are black. A power cord. Flat, flexible, modular leads. And the power supply itself, which is in this bubble wrap bag. And they have a piece of plastic here on the logo just to prevent it from being scratched. Now there are many power supplies in the Strider Gold series, but only currently two in the Gold S series. And they include this one, the 750 watt model, but they also have an 850 watt model. Now I'll be reviewing this one today, but I will be reviewing the 850 watt model a little later on. Their main focus with these power supplies is about downsizing the current power supplies you know so that they can fit just about in any ATX case even small form factor cases. Now while this is the 750 watt model it actually has a peak wattage of 800 but how is this wattage determined? Well to understand this you need to know what rails are and rails are basically well regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 150 watts and the 12 volt is 744 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt rail is 22 amps, the plus 5 volt rail is 25 amps, and it has a single plus 12 volt rail, and that is 62 amps. Now, the power supply is one of the most important parts of a computer system, so you do not want to cheap out when purchasing one. Get a brand name power supply, and there are a number of things you should be looking for when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now, generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig will require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. So, this power supply falls between those two. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency and this power supply's efficiency is 88 to 91% at 20 to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC or active power factor correction assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets, as you can see, the AD Plus Gold certification, and the NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire certifications are pending. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors because this ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. And this power supply has Japanese capacitors on the primary side. Now a power supply that does not have Japanese capacitors in some cases is fine. If your system is not that hardcore, as long as it is a quality brand name power supply, it should be fine. But my preference is to go with a power 
supply that has Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply like this one that is modular because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Also, it's important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty. And this power supply comes with a three year warranty. Now, as you can see, it comes in this black paint finish. The housing is steel. They include a very quiet 120 millimeter fan and there's also lots of ventilation. So with this fan and the many ventilation holes, this power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. Note the power switch. And here is where the power cord gets connected. This power supply is 100% modular, and that's excellent because you only need to use the cables required for your particular setup. And of course, this reduces the cable mess and thus increases airflow inside the case. And have a closer look at these cables. I love these leads because they are so thin and narrow and flexible, you can route them anywhere. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. This is an outstanding power supply in every respect. First of all, it gives you clean, quality power with a nice quiet fan and it's 100% modular. Not to mention how small it is. This power supply will fit in just about any ATX case that's currently on the market, even the tiny ones like small form factor cases. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com and while you're there, check out the pricing.